Okay, we've got a lot, got a lot of Canadas. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I'm, half, I'm half Canadian, so maybe I should, you know. Uh. According to Elon Musk, Tesla might construct 10 or 12 more gigafactories to reach its target of producing 20 million vehicles annually by 2030. Up to 99% of the locations designated for the next Tesla factory are in Canada. So, what advantages does Canada provide Tesla? Let's find out in today's episode of Tesla Car World. Welcome back to our channel. Before we begin, please show your support by subscribing if you haven't already and ringing that bell so you won't miss any of our interesting videos in the future. Now let's get started with today's content. At the 2022 shareholders roundup, Elon Musk announced that Tesla might share the location of its next Gigafactory in December of 2022. But following Musk's recent moves, Canada will be his next choice. Just last week, Canada's Minister of Innovation, Science and Industry, Francois-Philippe Champagne, visited Tesla's Markham facility, a city in the province of Ontario. This meeting could be the main clue about the new factory. So, if the next Gigafactory is to be built in Canada, what problems will it solve for Tesla in Texas? Elon Musk realized that Canada has existing production or reserves of all the critical minerals required to produce advanced batteries. 134,000 tons of nickel, 7,700 tons of graphite, and 4,361 tons of cobalt were mined in Canada last year. Despite not currently producing any lithium, this nation is thought to contain lithium deposits of 2.9 million tons. With such a large quantity, it's predicted that we can mine within the next 80 years. In the second quarter, Giga Texas is losing billions of dollars as they struggle to increase production because of a shortage of batteries and China port issues. Musk has repeatedly flagged nickel supply as the company's biggest concern as it boosts output, and the metal's availability is a source of anxiety throughout the EV sector. A 4680 battery can consume about 52 kilograms of graphite, 29 kilograms of nickel, 20 kilograms of copper, 8 kilograms of cobalt, and 6 kilograms of lithium. Nikon materials are often produced and processed in China and are not mined in the US at all. So Tesla has to depend on suppliers and this caused Tesla's second quarter vehicle deliveries to drop by 18% compared to the first quarter of 2022. Tesla has also recently signed multi-year nickel deals with Talon Metals and BHP Group Limited. Besides that, the automaker also became a technical partner on a nickel mine on the Pacific island of New Caledonia last year. However, to achieve the goal of 2 million vehicles per factory, Tesla must look for long-term alternative supply chains. And, um, and the world is not prepared to supply that much nickel. So Tesla came to us to speak because also this, most of all this nickel come from safe jurisdictions, jurisdictions that follow best practice in terms of, of VSGs. Back in March, there were reports that Tesla had signed an undisclosed deal with Brazilian mining firm Vale for a supply of Canadian nickel, the world's largest producer of iron ore and nickel. In addition to having a large natural store of nickel, Canada has environmental and sustainable governance advantage over many other mining markets, something Tesla and Musk have been vocal about as a condition of their contracts. Canada is quickly becoming the green supplier of choice for major auto companies, including leading European manufacturers as we transition to a cleaner, greener future. By partnering with Volkswagen and Mercedes, Canada is strengthening its leadership role as a world-class automotive innovation ecosystem for clean transportation solutions. Canada is committed to building a strong and reliable automotive and battery supply chain here in North America to help the world meet global climate goals, said Champagne. Tesla's competitors also take full advantage of this opportunity to compete with Tesla. Volkswagen and Mercedes have agreements with Canada related to sustainable battery production, production of cathode active materials, supply of important minerals, and other activities. But Tesla has more advantages because Tesla's sources of raw materials are available right next to the factory, which makes the world's leading automaker save many incurred costs. Moreover, vehicle quality will be better because there is no need to worry about the supply chain. So what exactly are the electric vehicle government incentives in Canada? 
While it works to open a Texas factory, Tesla still can't sell cars directly to customers in the state. Under Texas law, vehicles purchased directly from the manufacturer or an out-of-state dealer not licensed to sell or lease new vehicles in Texas are not eligible for a rebate. And this partially affects Tesla's sales. In Canada, there are no federal or provincial laws prohibiting manufacturers from selling direct to customers. However, unfortunately for those EV-interested drivers in Ontario, the government under Doug Ford scrapped its provincial electric vehicle rebate program in 2018. Ontario is currently in an election year, and various political parties are promising to reinstate the electric rebate program, including EV subsidies of up to $10,000. Quebec is a little more generous with its new vehicle rebate system. But do keep in mind that Quebec's rebate system is changing in July of 2022. Or has changed, I should say. The max rebate for all electric vehicles will drop. For all electric vehicles will drop to $7,000 while plug-ins will get a max rebate of $5,000. Moreover, under the Inflation Reduction Act, 40% of materials used in batteries should be sourced from North America or a U.S. trading partner by 2024. By 2029, 100% of materials used in batteries should come from North America or U.S. trading partners. Otherwise, the vehicles will not qualify for EV tax credits. That is the reason why Volkswagen and Mercedes signed deals with Canada a week after President Joe Biden signed the Inflation Reduction Act. And it doesn't seem to be a coincidence. The EV tax credits are a big step towards helping Tesla's sales grow and towards its future goals. Now, let's talk about the price of Tesla's electric cars when they eventually build the next Gigafactory in Canada. First, nickel prices are at an all-time high due to the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. Tesla would likely be unaffected by the rise in nickel prices because they would have signed long-term contracts with Vail. Second, lithium-ion batteries are dangerous to transport over long distances. A gigafactory in Canada is Musk's strategy to reduce shipping costs. Moreover, Canada has a great transnational rail system that can move large amounts of lithium and nickel around. So we can see Tesla will save from at least two avenues of strategic placement from their the next Gigafactory. For example, a new Tesla Model 3 in Canada will only cost $46,389 for the base standard range plus model with a limited 151 kilometer range. By setting up a factory in Canada with all the available advantages minus the shipping fee, the price of the Tesla will have a chance to be reduced to by about 15%. Do you feel that the price of Tesla's electric cars will be reduced in the future? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Otherwise, that's it for today's episode. We sincerely thank you for watching and for all of your support of our channel. And as always, if you enjoyed it, please leave a like, share the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and ring that bell to stay up to date on exciting developments in the world of EVs and green technology. Once again, we thank you so much from all of us here. We hope to see you again next time. Until then, take care and be safe.